Hello everyone, my name is M10, I'm playing Planet Zoo. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you have been here before, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on a gorilla enclosure to finish off the tropical trail. So to start off with, I just want to say, uh, as you can see, I'm sort of working on two enclosures at the same time here. Basically what happened is, I was originally supposed to, I originally had footage of me speed building the Okapi enclosure. Now, for whatever reason, that footage is not on my computer anymore. Maybe it wasn't recorded. Maybe I accidentally deleted it or something like that, trying to make space. I can't tell you what happened to be certain, but the footage isn't there of me making the enclosure, which is quite unfortunate because I really like the enclosure. And I think you would have too. But what I will do is, if I haven't uploaded it already before this, I'm going to do the regular cinematic, the regular tutorial of how to make the exhibit and we'll go from there. So, from here, from this point onwards, is entirely focused on making the gorilla enclosure. As you can see, I'm, I'm building a bit of a wall around the enclosure. I like to keep it, I decide to keep it nice and open so that the guests can walk through it. It relies very heavily on null barriers and, and natural barriers such as the rock ledge that I'm working on at the moment. Other than a little viewing area which you'll see later and the down, downstairs I guess you can call it area underneath the walking platform where the keepers can exit and enter the enclosure so I wanted to make it feel like the guests can, can are literally walking through the gorillas habitat but obviously you can't have that because in real life the gorillas you, would, you know rip the guests to shreds they're quite powerful and dangerous animals the issue I have with making rock walls like this is they can look very repetitive if you don't place it individually as you can or you'll see later on but I, I copy paste a lot of the rock wall around the enclosure just to try and get it done quicker and it works fine but you also have to kind of jumble some bits about so that it doesn't look like I'm just copy pasting which is what I am doing uh, I also like the idea with this enclosure that it's sort of on a mountain and the, and the guests can look down on the gorillas but they can also be at the same height as the gorillas so you can see there's a bit of land height variation which i think works very well i i, I think it's fantastic because usually when there's a mountain enclosure as such there's usually like it or, or, or in in actual zoos when they have a, a mountain that's sort of in the middle of the enclosure they put it put a moat around so that the animals can't escape with this there's no moat it's literally the animals can walk around almost all of the enclosure there's quite a lot of navigable area i think like gorillas require 800 meters this is up to 7,000 meters squared of navigable area oh, a bit of a bit of a tongue twister to say that one uh so it's it's very big it's very luxurious there's a lot of space and uh, right, right now, I'm, I'm sort of extending that. I'm adding a little bit of a cave at the bottom where they can feed and shelter because it's quite an open exhibit. There's a lot of space where the viewers can look out onto the gorillas. So I'm, I'm a bit worried at this point that, or at this point in the recording, that they will have high stress levels and stuff like that, which will be solved if they have places to hide. So yeah, here is me copy pasting the the rock wall around a bunch, trying to trying to make it fit, trying to make it work, trying to make it not look too spodgy and patchy and copy paste all the all the sorts of problems you get when you're copy pasting an item and then double stacking it. Uh, and I also have to make sure that the gorillas can't climb out of the enclosure because they can climb. They are apes, and they need. I'm not sure. I think it's like a level two or level three barriers. So this was something I needed to make sure it didn't happen with the enclosure. So a lot of tall rocks were put in. So little jump cut there. Basically, it was just me fiddling around with the rocks, uh, making sure that they didn't look too copy pasted by shuffling them around individually for a good like minute and a half with the sped up time lapse and I thought you know I'll cut that let's move forward let's move on 
So I had to worry about the gorillas not escaping. Clearly, you have to worry about that with all animals in this game. But here I'm blocking off one of the possible exit paths with some with some uh, what, what's like construction items with some walls and some like staff room walls that sort of thing. Uh, I also created a little glass barrier so that they couldn't jump out from that point there. So now I'm focusing on actually making the barrier. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the exhibit is based on natural barriers, so I use null barriers for it. But I wanted another viewing area, so I used glass. This is originally, sorry, this is this later changed to a one-sided glass. It gives gives the gorillas a little bit of uh, privacy because, like I said, the enclosure is quite open in regards to what the guests can see so just giving them just giving them little areas that they can sort of hide away that feel more natural i think will lead to better welfare and less worrying about stress and all that sort of stuff uh and then of course i have to blend in the barrier i gotta use some some rocks to hide it around i really prefer the look of barriers when they've been blended in with rocks and other natural other natural elements for the habitat. I, I just think that a lot of the time the exposed ground by itself doesn't really work or doesn't really have a good aesthetic in comparison to adding rocks and natural elements. That being said, uh, I also decided to kind of block off the barrier here and replace it with a, a, a building. As you can see, I'm using some wood because uh, it's, a, it's a natural, it's a natural material and I think it, it works well because, you know, it's a rainforest enclosure to have some wood, some wooden elements. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I captured it, but I also extended the top of this staff building to become a viewing area for the guests uh, just with a roof over the top just to give the guests some shelter and some shade because it's quite an open viewing area uh, in, you know if the game had or the game does have rain and if, if that was a factor you know I just wanted to make it feel more realistic by adding some cover I also blocked off the staff room uh, as you can see here with some rocks uh, just to make it because the guests don't really like being able to see the staff facilities so by this point uh, I've just added the gorillas into the enclosure and surprisingly the terrain was pretty acceptable uh, I could probably deal with a couple of changes but as you can see there's not enough climbing habitat at all so I decided I need to change that I am not using structures uh, as climbing frames that I made myself. I'm just using the default game ones. I think they're pretty good, provide a good variety of sizes and habitats and just different enrichment items. Uh, as you can see, I'm just sort of leveling out the terrain to make sure that they are climbable. Um, as you can see here, or if it, like very briefly, on the left of the enclosure, there is a little shelter that I have made for the gorillas and unfortunately it didn't look like I captured that either. I know it's very frustrating that uh, I just haven't been able to record these things. I'm going to try and be better at it in the future, of, of like avoiding accidentally not recording certain items. Basically, uh, I just added some sticks. Uh, and then duplicated them a whole bunch of times to create a roof panel and then cr made a blueprint out of that Duplicated that a couple more times and created a full shelter uh, and I think it looks pretty good. I'm not used to making my own shelters. I, I, I kind of have not oh, oh no I did for the Ocopy which I will show if that video hasn't been released yet. I will showcase that I was pretty proud of it but at this point um, it's time where I'm adding in trees and adding in some natural natural elements to the enclosure to help 
get correct plant coverage. Now, luckily, the gorillas can have up to 100% plant coverage, which I was very relieved about because I, I like the look of having lots of plants in the tropical enclosure for some weird reason. It might have to do with that it. it's a tropical enclosure. And a lot of, well, like the mandrills and the Nile monitor, for tropical, as far as being tropical animals go, they don't like that much plant coverage, which I found weird given their natural environment. But the gorillas like up to 100%, which is very good. Detailing this little cave shelter down the bottom as as you can see here this is the uh, man-made shelter I, I added it, it also acts as a viewing area as well but the little shelter down the bottom in the cave I, I wanted to add a little bit more detail to biting some vines and later on I also use the coastal mangrove trees and put them into the rock face whereas uh, I just have the roots sticking out and I think this worked very well in adding some character it's a little tip you can use if you want to make it look like there's roots dangling through or lots of little vines coming down all over the place because repeating the same curtain vines I didn't think was as effective and vines unfortunately are very difficult to place in this game given their orientation is sideways I, I think it would be nice if they changed it so that they were actually vertical because most vines hang down vertically as it is. Uh, I also have reused my upside down K-pop, a bit of a tongue twister there, K-pop, no, <laughs> K-pop tree trick. There we go, got there in the end, uh, of having an upside down K-pop tree. And I think it looks very well, uh, sorry, works very well. Oh, my tongue's all tied after, after that experience. So yeah, also just adding a lot of uh, enrichment items such as forage boxes, um, whatever, the, whatever the ones are called, the standing up ones, the suspended forages, that's it. Uh, I, uh, because it's a large enclosure, you just sort of have to add lots and lots of them around the enclosure and then it's, 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 a, bit of, it's a bit of a frustration because the, the keeper access is only on one side of the enclosure but if you have a super large enclosure you have to worry about placing enrichment items all the way around otherwise the animals uh, don't like it very much but then when the keeper comes in it only fills up a few and then you have to worry about the animals starving so there's a, there's a bit of a toss up between having a large enclosure because it looks good and the animals have plenty of space which even though they don't necessarily require it just looks better and I think, I think the guests like it more. Oh, I don't know if the guests like it more. It's a, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, and the game doesn't necessarily appreciate or, I guess, sort of push for larger enclosures. Um, because, yeah, like I said, the keeper has to access certain areas, and then the guests can't see through all the way to the back unless you have lots of different viewing areas. By the way, it seems to be a little bit glitchy with the guests, saying that they don't have a good view of the animals, even though there are some... Like, even when the, the viewing area is fantastic, it's they have a clear view of the animals, and like it's, it's very immersive and everything like that. The guests still sometimes seem to give bad feedback. I, I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Apparently, I heard that they said they were going to fix that to make it so that the requirements were a little less ridiculous, because I'm not entirely sure what makes a viewing area good for the guests. Uh, I guess that's something they're going to work out. One of the little things they're going to fix or, or just tweak later on. So if you have made it this far into the build, thank you very much for sticking around and I, I want to hear your thoughts. Do you like this style of constant commentary over the speed builds or do you prefer having more music based and no dialogue at all because my my theory or, or how I like to listen to commentaries is it's a bit of a mix sometimes I like listening to it sometimes I prefer to just listen to music and, and watch um, I also I also like that YouTube has the built-in speed feature so you can speed up or slow down the video if you want but obviously adding commentary it does take a bit more effort, but I'm just also conscious of, you know, using the same songs in every speed build video I might get a little bit boring, but I guess you could play your own music off, off a different device or something like that uh, if you have access to that and you're watching the video and just want to see that. 
Another thing I am working on for this enclosure is the outside. As you can see right now, uh, in, on the bridge between the gorilla and the Okapi enclosure, there's just a lot of flat, open, dry grass. And, and I didn't really like the look of that considering the theme of this area being tropical. So I decided to add a whole bunch of trees and sort of just green out the area a little bit more because the gorillas, like I said earlier, can have 100% plant coverage. So it's okay when there's lots of trees around the enclosure. Unfortunately for some animals, when you have trees outside the exhibit, but the shadow is cast in or it covers the exhibit, it still counts as coverage. So it's a, it's a bit, it's a bit iffy with some animals. So you, you can't, add lots of foliage around the outside unless it's like small like these birds nest ferns and stuff like that uh, i have found that if you place too many birds nest ferns because they're quite small it can look very similar so i reckon they need to add a couple more varieties of, of those sorts of plants um although there is a great variety at the moment i would also like to see a, a few more plants just put in just to just to just to increase the variety a little bit more I mean, the, the, the variety that they do have already is great. I think it's fantastic. But when you're limited to specific biomes, say like tropical, African, uh, because, because there's all the different animals from all the different biomes, some of them uh, get a little bit limited. You can only use, say, four different or four or five different types of, of plant, and then they have like the three or four different variations. Um, just an, a couple of things that people don't really focus on that much, but I would like to see improved. I'm also interested to see what animals they're going to add next into the game. I, I saw rumours about there being polar bears in the data files. I think that'd be cool because I noticed that they have um, Antarctica as a possible biome. Even though polar bears are from the Arctic, not Antarctica. But my guess is if they have Antarctica as a possible biome for the foliage, that they would have... They, they would have an interest in um, adding more Antarctic animals, considering they don't have any, to my knowledge, at the moment. Uh, maybe penguins, maybe seals, maybe... Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I, I'm, I doubt, you know, whales and walruses and... You know, walruses are Arctic as well. But, like, those sorts of things. I, I think... Uh, I, I doubt they're going to add them. I am hoping they are going to add more Australian animals. I'm guessing that'll come in like a DLC patch later. They'll have like Australian nature DLC with kangaroos, koalas, emus, wallabies, all, all, all that good stuff. Echidnas. But yeah, because the, the only Australian animals in the game at the moment, I believe, is the eastern brown snake, the saltwater crocodile, and I think maybe like a couple of the critters. There's a couple of exhibit animals that are Australian, but I haven't really paid too much attention to them. Yeah. Oh, I think they also might add cassowaries because they, they seem to like flightless birds just because of how the game's set up. I don't know if they'll be adding flying birds at the moment, but I, I, maybe they might. But I, I, I'm not sure how the game engine will handle or, or how the mechanics will handle that sort of thing. What, what classifies as an aviary. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they include it or not. I'd be happy without it, but it'd be nice if they did add it. I think it'd be cool. They might do like exhibits that are that are larger you know something something like that for birds we're getting to the end of the recording and the speed build now and to the end of my rambling <clears throat> just adding a last few little touches increasing the ground coverage a little bit just getting a lot a uh, few more plants around to make the ground seem less barren and bare but I'm really happy with how this enclosure turned out. I think it looks fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm quite proud, as you can, as you can probably tell. Uh, I did have a couple of little issues of the gorillas escaping in air quotations just because they were underneath where the barrier finishes. Like, they were still in the exhibit. They were just mucking around near the cave entrance thing there. And it was a little bit of an issue to figure out, but I managed to get it sorted. So I hope that isn't an issue anymore. I think this enclosure is quite detailed in comparison to some of my other enclosures and I, I think the guests will be happy. I, I know the animals will be happy with it. Uh, and I will do an extended cinematic for this. I think it'll be, be good. 
unfortunately I'm having problems with actually getting the guests over to it because it's quite far away and you have to go through a whole bunch of habitats to get here. So we'll see how that works out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode, everyone. If you did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment. If we can get 50 likes on this video, I think that'd be really awesome. I'm thinking of setting up a Discord or something like that so we can uh, discuss Planet Zoo and, and, and do that sort of thing. I'm not sure if I'll end up doing that at all anyway. But if you do enjoy, please subscribe for more Planet Zoo content. And I am enjoying it so far, so I'm planning on pumping out more. See ya. So